Cloud9 still dominating the league. Who is going to be challenging this squad? I think they're by far the best team in terms of macro. They also have really good mechanical players to back it up. But you have oh! Edge of Night locking them out. Hakuov is taking out bullet time strides through the team. I'm kind of surprised by the record, but I think they can be a good team. There's a triple for Rainer, but Pickle gets the other, and that's an ace for Team Liquid. They always get a bunch of hype before the season starts, and then they're like, newfound motivation to do better, but I mean, just play well. But there's the ace for Team Liquid. Nick just now exposed and they take the series. Cloud9 still undefeated, the team to beat in the NALCS. Legends heading your way, but earlier, before everything gets started up, C9 heading to the stage, still undefeated just a short time ago. Team Liquid sporting those red eye jerseys for Valentine's Day. Very, very fly. And of course, Golden Blue all smiles here, going into what will be probably one of his toughest matchups of the split. Hello, everyone. I'm James Dash Patterson. Joining me in the analyst zone is Isaac Azale Cummings Bentley. How are you doing on this Friday evening? I'm doing great. You know, we'll have to see. Is Golden Blue still smiling at the end of the day? <laughs> That's the thing, man. At least he's coming into the day optimistic, right? You want to see the smiles on the, on the faces of the teams that aren't doing so well going into the matchups. Let's go ahead and set up the table, pull up the standings, how the teams are stacked up. Here we got Cloud9 sitting undefeated in first place. TSM and FlyQuest, they're just one game back. Phoenix 1 dropped to 4th, and there is a 4-way tie for 5th between Liquid, CLG, Immortals, and Echo Fox. Now, we are a third of the way through the split, and I want to look at expectations coming into 2017, starting at the top of the tables with C9 holding that first place. Yeah, you know, you have to say Cloud9 at the top of the tables, somewhat expected, but where it wasn't expected is, is how fast they got there. You know, Jensen talked about how he felt like Contract has a lot to learn, would take a while to get up to speed as a rookie, but it has not looked like that. This guy has come in, he has gelled well with the team, and they have been smashing people. Yeah, uh, without a doubt, obviously, the, uh, the undefeated record goes to say that plenty on its own, but as you mentioned, it's really how quickly they came into it and that they've even surprised themselves as an organization, as a roster, with how well they are doing. Let's just see if they can keep riding that high there. Or getting even <laughs> better with contracts. That would be, yeah, exactly. There's that. Now, the, the team that's at the top of the table that was unexpected, FlyQuest. Let's talk about them. No one thought these guys were going to be top two coming into the split. Yeah, I mean, everyone had them, you know, somewhere down at the bottom of the table, eighth, ninth, tenth. Uh, they haven't played the best teams yet, but they are doing very, very well, have an incredible match record, great drafting. High in particular has looked fantastic, and I've been super impressed that he has found new answers to champions like LeBlanc, who people aren't even willing to play. The Zed, the Kassa, and He's looked great. Right, and while FlyQuest is doing very well, we've got some teams that we didn't expect to struggle as much yeah. as they are in Liquid, CLG, Immortals, to name a few. Yeah, I mean, these guys, uh, Liquid especially, they were high-profile pickup with Rainover. Everyone was talking about the high expectations for them. The owner saying, you know, sky's the limit for the team this year, and they're right. not looking good. And a lot of these guys have got to step it up because they're not expected to be bottom-tier teams. Exactly, and all of these results have come as a result of individual performances that either did or did not hit the mark. So let's go ahead and take a look at some leaderboards here. We're going to have kills per game. This is the one I want to focus in on first. Moon, high in Acadian here, top three on kills per game. I mean, these guys have been smashing Acadian top with overall kills, but kills per game, he is third. Moon and him have been tearing up the jungle. Moon did not perform well in the past, has been smashing this season. Acadian rookie comes on the scene, playing on one of the lower tier teams, and he is looking dominant as well. And high, of course, uh, there's a lot to be said about how well he's playing. Oh, yeah, longtime veteran that has absolutely been showing up this split. And on such a diverse champion pool. I mean, you talk about this new 10-band system and, and LeBlanc as a threat in the mid lane. Well, FlyQuest is one of the few teams that has strategies to play into that, and it really opens them up, and it's from high. It really does. I mean, he's played the most champions in the mid lane of any player. Uh, he's playing stuff that's not meta. He picks what works for him and what works for his team, and he has looked great doing it. Right. Now, for more on the legacy of the veteran shot caller, make sure you check out our article on lullesports.com, The High Road. Another player we will be tracking this week is Expecial. He is quickly approaching his 2,000th career assist. He's only at 1983 right now, so 17 more, and he's got it. And it's very likely 
likely to happen this weekend, perhaps even tonight. Yeah, it certainly could. I'll be excited to see if he can match the hype around the thousandth kill for double if the way in which that, you know, <laughs> that found Divey got it. So he'll have to pull something crazy up. That's true. Yeah, the way it was done. And also, it's kind of hard to say, like, well, watching an assist happen is probably a lot less, you know. <laughs> it a, could be a cool it, assist, it could be cool, I really hope it's a cool assist to make his 17th and get that 2,000, 2000 overall. Well, we'll see if those 17 assists come today as Team Dignitas faces off against Immortals. But first, it's going to be Cloud9's contracts versus Rainover and the rest of Team Liquid. And the birthday boy taking the stage today. Smoothie, happy birthday to him. He's going to be in there having a great season for himself. C9 obviously heavily favored here. And he wouldn't have thought so a year ago against someone like Rainover. But Contracts has looked great. And the whole C9 squad has looked so good. I was about to say, let's talk about this jungle matchup just real briefly. Contracts into Rainover. Rainover touted as the best jungler in North America yeah. last year. Now going up against the, you know, the young stud here in Contracts, who's melded with his team very mm -hmm. well. Now, Recently, maybe last week, people would say Rainover had a slight uptick in his play. Do you think he has what it takes to control contracts? I definitely think he does. The question to me is more, can the rest of the lanes match up well? It's very hard if all your lanes are losing uh, to be able to perform well in the jungle. You know, Rainover seems to have fixed some of his champion pool issues. Early picking the Olaf was working well for him. He had a great Kha'Zix performance. I think this guy can stand up individually. But can Golden Glue stand up to Jensen? Can the bot lane stand up? I That's the thing. It's, it's very clear that the odds are stacked here against Team Liquid, so we'll have to see how they fare once we get in the game. For now, though, the teams are ready, so it's time to send it over to our casters to get the games underway. Thank you very much.